Hi, good afternoon. I am Jonani, head of interviews in the Times. And please introduce yourself. Uh, hi, I'm Radha, and uh, I'm co-founder and the director of One for Expeditions. This company which organizes uh, the wildlife tours across uh, tiger reserves in India. And I am also a teacher and I teach biology in the school. So I'm currently still teaching at BSC at the school. Oh, yeah, okay. So um, how did you want to make this idea work? From which initiative? Was there any surprise or um, a passion? See, I was always associated with nature, yes. But wildlife, uh, it, it was like I think uh, six to seven years back um, when I first encountered the tiger. So when, the, the day I saw my first tiger, I think the whole thing changed. I, I was a complete person of that. And I always wanted to go back to the jungle. And I was also, I'm also passionate about teaching and uh, you know, inspiring young minds. So I somehow wanted to, you know, uh, combine both the things. And I always wanted to do it. But somehow I didn't know how to work out. So suddenly came out with the idea of, fine, why not I start my own company? Where I can take students outside of the nature and actually teach them what I teach them. So there are a lot of other companies which will incorporate some of your uh, ideas that's to take young crowd to wild, uh, to explore the wildlife and nature. So what is your company set? How does it set apart? Okay, so uh, the model of my company is Explore Experience Exclusive Product. So I would say that uh, now we organize tours, we don't organize tours, we organize experiences. So uh, myself being into teaching for like 15 to 16 years and being a subject and I have a partner uh, who is a naturalist who worked as a naturalist. I would call him as a movie of uh, the jungle. And uh, he's born and born in the jungle. And uh, so he knows, I think, uh, more than what we know as teachers about the world and all of that place. So if I bring students to experience of what we know, it's what we can tell you. What others do, I won't come in. Mean, they are the regular tools where you go for a safari and come back. Mars is not that. It's kind of a workshop. So for example, some of our college students get to experience this. What would be like some highlight that you want to give? See, it's going to be uh, some kind of a project which will be given to you actually. It's not that you simply come and uh, go on a ride and then come back to the hotel. It's not going to be like that. Uh, the first thing is we are uh, looking for uh, the kind of an experience like not to make you stay in a hotel room. You know, unhotel uh, the concept. Yeah and make you stay in a very uh, local environment, not give you a food which is like a hotel but prepared by the local people in a local way. So that's, itself this is something which is unique. Most of us have forgotten this kind of experience. Yes. So that is one thing. Second thing is that uh, when you come to the forest, uh, we might give you a project like maybe uh, <coughs> we, where people will be telling you that uh, you know, different kind of birds that you observe, different kinds of trees that you observe, they might also train you a bit of it at how we are tracking the tiger. So when you are in a safari, you are only not simply going around. You are learning a lot of things. And when you come back, there is going to be a group discussion between different groups as to what you have or what you observe and what is your the whole uh, uh, what you have studied maybe to come into the entire trip. So that is one thing. And we are also uh, trying to talk with the forest department that they can give us some project where we can bring students and they can work for the meeting. So indirectly you know, help the forest department as well and also might you know, instigate young minds in future they might think of taking it as a profession which I don't think many of you have ever encountered such experiences at this stage. So how did you, how was your first time encountering? Was it like, it's also the student kind of mindset new to the place? As I said, like my experience, uh, it, I mean like as a student, my wildlife thing was only, uh, I mean, my experience was only limited to watching a documentary on a TV. Yeah. Nobody in my family is related to wildlife. Yeah. Nobody. Okay. It is uh, just six to seven years back, as I said, when I first encountered my tiger. That was the turning point of my life. And then it's not just the tiger, it's just when you study the whole ecosystem there, when you listen to the alarm calls, the, the way the whole forest changes when the tiger crosses. There's a monkey giving you an alarm call, there's a peacock who's giving you an alarm call. Everybody is so alert. Mm -hmm. And then when they walk, it's like, my mind. Um, I wish I wanted to 
like I get to experience that one. Okay, so uh, a lot of people don't talk about uh, failures and struggle in starting a company. So, what would you like to say in terms of that to the end or That is what I'm going to talk about, yes, failures as well. See, uh, <clears throat> uh, because uh, we are so much into social media, Facebook, Instagram, and all. And what you post or what I post or what other post is only one success. And we only see that. So it's not like that. I mean, you must have faced hundreds of rejections. You must have faced hundreds of failures. But I see. I, I think what I am today is because of those rejections and because of those failures. I'm blessed that I had those failures and I had those rejections, which made me even more stronger. So it's very, very important when you're in an entrepreneurship that you should learn to handle your failures and learn to learn from your failures. It's very, very important. And you should speak about it and you should make it as a big step. Because what went wrong? Why did you fail? It's very, very important. So now that you're very inspired about the nature and my life, you have a passion towards it. And a lot of people have passions, but they don't pursue it. So do you think pursuing passion will you know, be a changing point in their career? Or? Uh, um, it depends uh, how they feel about it. To me, career is not money. It's more of my satisfaction. I will be satisfied with the money that I get to When it comes to such kind of passion, or such kind of passion kind of passion, I won't say that you take a lot of money. To start with, maybe once you have your name, you will get it. So you have a lot of uh, patience. It's not like uh, generally a trend is that if you see even on the road, today there's one EQ. Okay, it will work for one month, two months, one month, shut down. Why? Because you know what? what? Take it and it returns. It's not possible. In any business, quick returns is not possible. I mean, uh, unless and until, uh, see, there are two kinds of things. These are called as social education. That is different. But uh, like the real estate business, you know, they are different. They might have quick money. These kinds of places don't expect quick money. They work by quick money. So it depends to you what you define by your as. So, you know, you being a biologist and changing this entire uh, career path, did you face like, you would have obviously faced like few difficulties. Could you like cite some that share? Oh my god, uh, yes, I know. Uh, the biggest difficulty that I uh, faced is haunting my school. <laughs> but, like, um, I, I am seriously mad about going to college. Like, I have to, once in two months, I have to go there, otherwise I can't survive. And I just can't keep telling people at my office that no, I'm going there, I'm going to so many kind of excuses like, yeah, you won't leave. <laughs> <laughs> That's looking at me. But every time I'm going to leave, it's like, now the people know because it's I've openly told yeah. you know, that yes, I'm so, But now it's like people are saying, even, even if I'm taking a Monday leave, even if it's a Saturday, you know, where you went, like Saturday, Sunday, Monday, you went must have gone Saturday, you go anywhere. So that's one challenge that I face. The second is, yes, like teaching for a comfort job, right? So it's like once you, you know, the finest hour of your day is gone there. Yeah. So by the time I'm back home, I have a couple. So it's like, it's different way to handle both things. But I guess when you're passionate about something, nothing matters. You will still work to this. So a lot of women in India don't prefer to go that far into the forest or anything as a matter of fact. So, you being a woman and being at that age, how did you take it? Or what was the family situation around you? All that. See, I come from a very conservative family. Okay. I and mean, uh, to an extent that uh, during our ages, it needs to be a one four, one tail four in one living room. So even if I have to pick it and call my, uh, call my friend, I have to ask my parents, like, why are we calling? It was that kind of a conservative environment. But yes, uh, I think I created myself a lot in spite of all these things. I had my own uh, set of values, I had my own set of principles. I don't follow whatever somebody tells me that oh, this is how it has to be in society. So I am that kind of uh, eccentric, you say, or whatever. Mm -hmm. What I like, what I believe, I'll do that. So I have been a little bit like that. I think that has helped me to. Get into this kind of a profession which by that is basically made out of it. Yeah. It is made out of it. But then 
then yes, it's very it's difficult for people to take you seriously. But once you prove yourself, people will take you seriously. So after you attain some success in your life, like in the wildlife and the nature category, how do people take you? They're surprised. They are surprised. Yeah, how can the worst thing like how can you handle like you are a teacher and then you are doing this also? So how are you going to do it? So, um, what defines, um, I've been asking this to a lot of people, like what defines happiness to you? 